Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It's Friday, which means whether you want to hear it or not, I'm going to be doing some obscurities in literature. And the book I hold in front of you is absolutely, I'd say to most modern comic readers, pretty obscure. This is The Moving Fortress, and I should say also North American readers by Barrero and Alcatena, who were a pair of Argentinian authors who worked together on a whole bunch of different stuff, uh, which... I have tried desperately to track down information on, and it's not so easy. They did publish a couple things in English, um, but the thing that drew me to this originally was the Tim Truman cover and the introduction by him. It is kind of interesting that Chuck Dixon's name ends up right in the middle, because I guess he did the rewrite of the Spanish script. So, this is by Four Winds Publishing, which I believe both Truman and Dixon worked on, and they put out quite a few interesting fantasy graphic novels. And if there's time, we'll go into some of those other ones at a future date, because I know there are more books by these two that actually did get translated into English. Now, one of the things that initially drew my attention to the actual book is just the level of crazy detail, and as soon as you open it up, The Moving Fortress, um, you're just greeted with very unique fantastical surreal very surreal art and I think Alcatena is the one that actually did the art and it goes into a little bit about the creators but just again this was right up my alley I want to say I picked this up at like slave labor graphics back when they had a little hole-in-the-wall comic shop in San Jose or San Francisco somewhere northern California area uh, slave Labor were the guys that did like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and Evan Dorkin's Milk and Cheese, which we were really big fans of growing up. But I'm pretty sure I picked this up there along with a bunch of other Tim Truman books and there was just no turning back for me. So again, you've got the Moving Fortress itself. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of the story. That's always a fun thing for you guys to discover on your own. But if you're into fantasy comics, which I absolutely am, there is some fun stuff on display in this book. Um, you might remember I did a review ages ago on the, what is it, the history of the rune staff, the Moorcock art story comic, whose words are escaping me at the moment. Anyway, uh, similar style in my opinion. It has a very late 70s, early 80s of originality appeal to it. Before we had everything kind of get locked in place and what was acceptable fantasy artwork Like Triceratops with cannons on them uh, Just the artwork itself. There's so many interesting weird Characters floating around in the background of these stories just This is my kind of book and I think it's interesting that I feel the black and white art actually really does it some major favors. I don't think you can get as much interesting looks to the stuff if it had been in color. But then again, I always would prefer black and white comics and being a big manga fan. Just a lot of interesting stuff. I know I've read this at some point or another. Um, it's been a while. But again, if you're looking for something interesting and unique, you're definitely going to find it here. There's our cities again. This was so up Teenage High Lord Tamberlane's alley. It was insane. Yeah, I really like the judicious use of blacks and the negative space there with the inks. I don't remember if it was this book or the other one that has more of a Asian vibe to it. I think it's the other book they did. There was another one called Subterra, which they released maybe a year or two after this one. That is a mighty Grimjack looking fellow. Wilderness by Tim Truman. Okay, well, I think I found myself an obscurity that I am not familiar with. I really dig Tim Truman's artwork, too. 
So yeah, a trip down memory lane to simpler times, pre-internet times, when you could find stuff like this that you never heard of, and that was half the fun of digging through the back issue bins of the comic shops or hole-in-the-wall indie comic publishers that also um, worked as vacuum cleaner repair companies. That was always interesting. So, yeah. Good times. <clears throat> Hopefully I will be able to drag down some more of these books to share with you guys, but I know I do have Subterra somewhere at home, which was, I believe, actually a indirect sequel to this. But if you're in the mood for some nonsensical fantasy art that really is unfettered by any of the typical tropey designs that we see in most stuff today, I don't think you can go wrong with books by either of these artists. But Alcatena's artwork is absolutely crazy. Uh, if you go take a look online for some of his art, absolutely surreal very symbolic and metaphorical, which I totally dig, and yeah, I'm rambling again. So, I will leave you with those words. Good luck if you find any of this, or if you guys have any leads for where this stuff is published, and if it's actually still published in Spanish, um, I would love to take a crack at it as well. So, for all of you Spanish speakers or Argentinians out there who know where to track this stuff down, um, by all means, please point me in the right direction. With that said... This has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.